Do you love coffee? I sure do. In our kitchen, we got a whole station set up with all the coffee things. So you know I love to drink some coffee. But that's not the only thing you can use coffee for when you're following a keto or low carb lifestyle. So today on Southern Keto, I'm gonna show you my favorite two things to do with coffee other than drinking them. Stick around. <music> Now, one of my subscribers, Donna, sent me some samples of this coffee that I'm gonna use in today's video. And this video is not sponsored by them or anything, but I just think they're a really great company. And she told me how good the coffee was. And I've had a lot of coffee. That This one particular blend that I'm gonna use later on is the best one that I've ever had. So I did reach out to them, got a couple of bags of coffee, and I also got you a discount code if you wanna order any. And I'm gonna put that down below in the description and on the screen. I'm telling you, if you're a coffee lover, you're absolutely gonna love this. But I love it because I love good flavors. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with coffee, I'm gonna make a barbecue rub that you can put on pork butt, or you could put it on chicken if you wanted to. The company is called Global Teas, and this rub I'm gonna make uses their Mexican coffee in there for a little bit of nice coffee flavor with a little bit of heat. And it's good to drink by itself as well. Then I'm gonna use what's called their Winter Magic Coffee to make a coffee ice cream using my ice cream recipe that is absolutely amazing. So let's go in the kitchen. I'll show you what you need to put together these two things that you can make with coffee. And you can drink some along with it too, if you want to. Let's get in the kitchen. So the first thing we're gonna need is this Mexican coffee from Global Teas. And it's a medium roast coffee. It's got a little bit of dark roast in it. And it's got a hint of cinnamon, ginger, cayenne, dark chocolate, and of course, beaver free vanilla. We're gonna start out with six tablespoons of that beautiful coffee. And this is enough for about a seven, eight pound pork butt. Then add in three quarters of a cup of Magic Baker Brown or your favorite brown sweetener. Then you're gonna to wanna to add in a quarter cup of salt and normally I'll use Redmond's, but for this I just use sea salt. Add in a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and don't worry, this is not gonna make you hurt while you eat. It's the perfect amount for a seven, eight pound pork butt. Next, I'm gonna sprinkle some black pepper on the counter and I'm gonna to try to get a tablespoon of that in the rub also. Then I'm gonna go in with two teaspoons of garlic powder, which is one of my favorite spices if you didn't know. Absolutely love this stuff. Try to get a little of that on the counter too so that counter is well seasoned. Next, I'm gonna go in with one teaspoon of onion powder. So we got a nice rounded out rub except for one thing. I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of smoked paprika just to give it a little bit of extra something something. And then we'll just mix all this up together. I'll use a whisk to kind of break up all that brown sweetener, try to get it well incorporated and just mix it up until you got a nice mix and all those ingredients are real happy in there. So before I put the rub on that pork butt, I figure it's time for a coffee. So I'm gonna take my French press Put about a quarter cup of that Mexican coffee in, boil up some water, and once that's done, I'm just gonna pour it up with about two cups of water. You can stir it if you want to, but I found it doesn't really matter. And then put your lid on top, make sure you leave that handle up, and then set your timer for four minutes. After four minutes, this is ready to come out. You press that plunger down to push all the grinds to the bottom, and you're ready to drink this beautiful coffee. So now that I got some coffee in me, I'm gonna take this seven to eight pound pork butt, put it on some aluminum foil, and then I'm gonna rub it down with this beautiful rub, cover it with aluminum foil, and put it in the fridge for at least 12 hours, maybe even a little bit longer if I can. Now, if you like videos like this, it'll give you some great ideas for your keto or low carb diet. Make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button down there, click the bell next to it. And anytime I do a new video, you'll know about it. Now for this low carb coffee chocolate chip ice cream, I'm gonna use the Winter Magic coffee. And the reason I like that so much, it's medium, it's got a little bit of that dark roast in there too, but it's got some cinnamon, some dark chocolate, and some vanilla flavors. And it's delicious in this ice cream. You're gonna to need to start this the day before you wanna make the ice cream because you gotta cold brew some coffee. So I'm just gonna take this Winter Magic coffee, open it right up, I'm gonna take my French press, and if you don't have a French press, 
I'll put a link in the description of the one I use if you need to pick one up. I'm going to pour in half a cup of the coffee, so twice as strong as if you were making it hot. And then I'm going to put some water in there. Put in as much as you want. I put in a little too much myself, but hey, I like being risky, so I'm just going to do it. Ideally, you want about two cups. Give it a good stir with a spoon or a knife or whatever you want to use to stir it up with. Get it all pretty well combined. And then we're just going to put the top on it. Make sure you leave the plunger up again. And then this coffee is going to make its appearance in the fridge. And I'm going to leave it in for at least 18 hours. But I like 24 myself. 24 hours later. So when you're 24 hours or as long as you can stand it is up, go ahead and take it right out of the fridge. Oh yeah, that is some good looking stuff. So I'll just take it and put it right on the counter. And now it's time to push this plunger down because now we've got cold brew coffee. Look how good that looks. The only thing it's going to look better in is some beautiful coffee chocolate chip ice cream. Now I'm going to leave a link to my ice cream video in case you haven't seen it, but I'm not going to go through and bore you with all the details again. Just click up there or down in the description and watch it if you want to. There's two differences in this recipe. The first one is you're going to replace the almond milk with this strong cold brewed coffee. And the other difference I'm going to show you in just a minute. And hey, if you want to make it a little stronger, you could put more coffee in there or you could add in some coffee extract to this too. But I feel like making it this way makes the perfect coffee ice cream. So of course you got to take a yellow mixing bowl because if you don't have one, it just ain't going to taste as good. You're going to mix in that cold brew coffee. You're going to mix in your beef gelatin. And then give that a little bit of whiskey business. Oh, and of course I... Got a little extra left over, you know, for myself. I love a good cold brew coffee, especially as hot as the days have been down here lately. So I'm just going to quench my thirst for a minute and we'll get on to the next step. So next we're going to mix in the heavy cream and make sure these ingredients all get together and try to love one another right now. Now I'm still going to add in my beaver free vanilla extract. But you can add coffee extract also if you want a little more coffee flavor. That's up to you. Now the other difference in this is I'm using the Truvia Sweet Complete granulated in this recipe just to show you it can be done. I recommend allulose if you want it right out of the freezer to be the way you want it. But if you see that smoke right there, that is the smoke from the keto ice cream rising from the ashes and you actually having a texture of ice cream that's the way it's supposed to be. Now you will need one additional step if you make it with a sweetener other than allulose and I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Add in just a little sprinkle of salt that just helps that sweetener and helps the flavor of the ice cream overall and then we're gonna go and pour it right into a pot on the stove top to heat it up. Now while that's heating up on the stove top I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my xanthan gum. And if you remember from my other video, you only want to heat this liquid up to 125 degrees because that's when the xanthan gum is going to dissolve totally in there. And once that's done and at 125 degrees, I'm going to pull it off the heat. I'm going to take it over to my counter and that's when we'll add in the xanthan gum so that it will absorb properly and you don't have to worry about it clumping up and making chunks in your ice cream. So then I'm going to take that mix and just pour it right back into that same yellow mixing bowl. And you can take this opportunity to make sure it's really well combined right. and that xanthan gum is not clumped up in there. Make sure it's incorporated. And it's going to need to hang out for just a little bit in the fridge until it cools down completely. Well, I just can't stand it anymore. So now I got to check it and make sure it's ready. It's ready. So let's take this out. Let's make some ice cream, shall we? So now take your ice cream maker bowl, put it right inside your ice cream maker. And I've got all the instructions for this in the other video. So just check it out if you want a little more in depth. But you're just going to pour it all in. 
and you're gonna start making some ice cream. Even though this ice cream only takes 25 minutes, I'm gonna set my timer to 20 minutes because that's the point where I wanna add in these chocolate chips and I find these at Walmart. I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of them. Well, the quarter cup I'm gonna to add to the ice cream, the ones on the counter, I'm gonna to add to myself. So while that ice cream is churning in there, you can just sprinkle them in the top. Let them kinda of incorporate a little bit and sprinkle a few more. And then we're gonna have some beautiful coffee chocolate chip ice cream. I mean, does that look good or what? Rebel ain't got nothing on me. So I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes just so I don't forget. And by the time you get back to the ice cream maker, those chocolate chips should be well incorporated. So then you can just turn your machine off and it's time to get it ready. I mean, look at that. Is that not creamy and beautiful? Now the nice thing with using a sweetener other than allulose to make this ice cream is this exactly like soft serve right now as soon as it comes out of the ice cream maker. The bad thing is if you want it to stay this consistency you're going to need to set it out on the counter for a few minutes before you want to have some after you put it in the freezer. Where the one made with allulose will stay this consistency even after days in the freezer. But I just wanted to show you that you can use another sweetener in there just because of the other ingredients that we use. So whatever ice cream you're not going to eat right now, just pack it into one of these quart ice cream containers. I'll put a link down in the description for the ones I use if you don't have any. And then you can put it in the freezer for as long as you like. Just remember, if you use a sweetener other than allulose, and if you're going to use allulose, just follow the exact recipe from the other one. If not, you're going to have to leave it out on the counter. And how long? Everybody's freezer is different. I'd say anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. So a couple days later, after mine had sat on the counter and thawed for probably 20, 25 minutes, this is what it looks like. Absolutely delicious. Amazing taste with some great coffee. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to put a couple of videos over here for some other things that are going to go great with a great coffee. And if you like what I'm doing here with these videos and want to support my channel, I've got a couple new options down in the description where you can buy me a coffee or join the YouTube membership. I'm going to add a lot of exciting things to the YouTube membership in the future. I hope you've enjoyed a great coffee while you're watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.